story, but it's been a while since I watched it. I know that that movie scared the living daylights out of me when I was a kid. I guess I would have to rewatch the movie to kind of see if they kind of tie in together. Maybe this is what it's based off of. If you know, let me know in the comments, but I, I doubt it. I don't remember the movie kind of, I guess, having this as a backstory. Alrighty. This tragic crime unfolded during Halloween in 1974, but it continues to haunt residents of Houston, Texas, and beyond to this day. Ronald O'Brien gave out pixie sticks to two of his kids, as well as three others as Halloween treats. But little did they know that those classic paper tubes of colored sugar contained an extra ingredient that would wind up killing one of O'Brien's kids. It was said that after ingesting the sugar, one of the boys said that it had a very bitter taste and that it did not taste right. The candies were spiked with cyanide, and O'Brien's son, Timothy, was poisoned to death an hour after ingesting one. Fortunately, none of the other children had eaten theirs. Initially, O'Brien faked sad confusion over the boy's death, but after authorities found out that he had taken out life insurance policies on his kids as well as adding as well as adding machines that had crunch numbers identical to the amount he was set to collect he was swiftly arrested charged and eventually sentenced to death wow so this is like an insurance thing so he got caught up because there was proof that he added insurance and then also an adding machine. I'm thinking that he was like adding up the total somewhere to where the police found it. Um, that's crazy. I, I don't know. I really, I don't understand criminals that will take out life insurance policies and then like kill their spouse or whatever because, I mean, that's so obvious that, you know, that's like something that is so obvious that they'll probably find out, so I don't understand why they do that. But this is very sad. And I remember when I was a kid, I know my grandma literally would freak out when we would go trick-or-treating because she was scared that people were going to, like, spike the candy with certain things. So we literally only trick-or-treated in, like, our neighborhood and safe places. And I know, like, my parents and stuff would like look through the candy to make sure that nothing looked weird. There was even a point where like my parents would only get, only allow us to get candy that was like pre-packaged like in a pack. So like I'm trying to think of a candy that came individual. I can't think right now, but if the candy was like out of its packet, like let's say the little Starburst was in a pack, then we weren't allowed it's kind of astonishing, I guess, and interesting on it as to how he would have put it in the pixie sticks and, like, sealed it up. But I guess, you know, they're children, so they don't really probably pay attention to stuff like that. Very, very sad story. The next one is the murder of Ronald Seisman and Elizabeth Blatzman. Photographer Ronald Seisman, 39, and Elizabeth Platzman, a 20-year-old student at Smith College in Massachusetts, were beaten to death in their Manhattan apartment on Halloween night in 1981. Police at the time alleged that the murderers were tied to a robbery and believe that Seisman may have known the killer since there appeared to be no signs of any forced entry. There were allegations at one point that Dave
David Berskowitz, popularly known as Son of Sam, may have known something about them. The case remains unsolved to this day. So this is an unsolved case, and that is so scary. I'm not sure who David Berkowitz is. I might have to, like, look him up. Maybe there's more to that. If you know who that is, let me know. But I'm gonna definitely look it up. Maybe I should, um, if I find it, like, you know, interesting, maybe I'll do a, a video on it. But, I don't know, most of the time, when you get your house broken into, it's always someone you know, like, I mean, I don't know about forced robberies, but I know for sure, like, when you get robbed, usually it's someone you know, because they know your patterns and stuff like that. It's so sad. Okay, and the next one is the East Coast Rapist. Connecticut resident Aaron H. Thomas, known as the East Coast Rapist, was suspected of a slew of rapes throughout his life. Among, among his most notorious crimes was an incident on Halloween night in 2009 that involved a trio of rapes and abductions. Assaults in the East Coast Rapist investigation spanned more than 400 miles in 12 in incidences presenting major obstacles for investigators. Ronald Hosko, special agent in charge of the criminal division at FBI's Washington field office, said in a press release at the time, but this capture is an excellent example of a coordinated law enforcement effort tying together 14 years of work by investigators who never gave up. Wow, this seems so interesting. Maybe I should do a full video on this case because it seems like there is a lot that this person did, like dying, like 14 years. Jesus. Thomas was apprehended in New Haven in March 2011 and he was eventually indicted on 54 charges two years later, according to NBC News. Included in those were two counts of rape and three counts of abduction in connection to the case in Prince William County, VA, in which Thomas attacked three teenagers that were out trick-or-treating. Then he forcibly took them to a wooded area and violently raped two of them, both aged 17. He was sentenced to three life terms in prison for his crimes. Wow, that is intense. I'm going to have to research this guy a little more. I also want to just note that when I initially read through this, I was just reading it silently, you know. But like now that I'm trying to read it to you and, you know, read it at a slower pace and stuff like that, I have stumbled across quite a few errors, like spelling errors, grammatical errors, and I'm honestly shocked that Oxygen, it's like Oxygen Crime News would publish this on their website because there's a lot of errors, like says who is doing your proofreading, like this is not good, but... I'll link it and you guys can look. There's quite a few. Oh, you guys hear the cars? I'm so sorry. It's one o'clock in the morning and it's still live. I apologize for that. The next one, the all too real Halloween prank. Halloween 2010 spelled tragedy for a family in Martin, Ohio. A small community less than 20 miles outside of Toledo. Devon Griffin, 16, arrived home after attending church to a scene of carnage fit for a Halloween thriller. The slain bodies of three of his family members, although he managed to call... Oh, ugh, I'm telling you guys. 
guys out of the way they wrote this. The slain bodies of three of his family members. Although he managed to call his aunt, who then phoned authorities about the incident, Griffith Griffin told police in Ottawa County that he thought the bodies were part of an elaborate prank being pulled for the holiday. William Lisk Jr. was arrested in connection to the killings, which involved both of his parents and another family member. He reportedly had a history of suffering from mental illness prior to his capture, but was eventually sentenced to life over the horrific Halloween mur murders. Wow. So, so I'm like trying to look at this. So it looks like like the brother came home and the other brother killed everybody. Again, again this is a little bit confusing and I low-key don't even want to like post this video because <laughs> these, some, I mean they're very interesting but I feel like the article is like not good. probably still post it because I am currently working on some different true crime videos for you all. That was the last story, so this this is pretty much it for the video, but I just wanted to let you know that if you have any suggestions, I decided to start posting true crime once a week since you guys love it so much. And I find it interesting, so feel free to send me messages on Instagram, in the comments, wherever, the community tab, wherever you want to send me suggestions, because I'm, I'm really into it. So just stay tuned, because this month I'm going to be doing a few more true crime cases, and they're all going to kind of be around Halloween time, around October, okay? I hope that you enjoyed the video, even though this article was terrible. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna post the link. Y'all can laugh at it. Um, yeah, so have a good day, night, evening, whatever you have going on. See you in the next one, okay? I haven't blown you guys a kiss in a while.